Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 474 of Ink in Your Veins. I'm Rachel Heron, and I'm very glad to be here today with Robin Finn. And I am also sick, so I have pretty much dragged myself to the computer for a little while. And I'm not going to give you a big update, um, but I will say that my trip away to do research in Wanganui was really wonderful. And um, yeah, that's all I have energy for. So I'm going to give you her bio and we're going to jump right in. All right. Robin Finn, MPHMA, is the author of the new book, Heart, Soul, Pen, Find Your Voice on the Page and in Your Life. She's the creator and founder of Heart, Soul, Pen, Women's Writing Workshops and Hot Writing, where midlife and menopause inspire the desire to say what you mean without apologizing. Robin teaches writing for groups and organizations across the United States. Her work has appeared in national and international press, including the NYT, the Washington Post, and the LA Times. She holds master's degrees in public health from Columbia University and in spiritual psychology from the University of Santa Monica. Robin's passion is helping women unleash their radical self-expression and connect, heal, and transform through writing. Okay, I hope that you are feeling well and um, getting some writing done. Please enjoy this interview. And I'm very glad you're here. Here we go. Well, I am so excited to have you on the show. Will you please share your name and pronouns with us? I'm Robin Finn, and my pronouns are she and her. Thank you, Robin. Welcome. Welcome to the show. On this, I'm excited to talk to you about your book, Heart, Soul, Pen. And I'm excited to talk to you about your writing process because that's really what we focus on on this show. Can you tell us a little bit about what your writing process looks like as it fits into your life right now? And I know that processes change as they go. Yeah, so my process has changed a lot. and um, But I'll say my current writing process is that I write every day for, not on the weekends, Monday through Friday. Sometimes I write on the weekends, but I don't hold myself to that. So I hold myself to writing every day, Monday through Friday for at least an hour. And um, that's really my process because sometimes the one hour can be eight hours. And sometimes mm -hmm. the one hour is like misery and it's like 50 minutes, six, you know, 58 minutes, you know, and it's just like, please let it end. So it just depends. <laughs> yeah, I would I would love to point out too that this this hour is kind of magical. And for me, my bare minimum has always been for many years like an hour. But for me, that means 45 minutes. I do a 45 minute block and 15 minutes off. And then often I'll do another 45 minute block. But but just doing 45 minutes or an hour completes whole books. We do not need great huge pockets of time to write. Is that what you found? Well, I mean, I have to say as a teacher and because I work mostly with women, I often tell them five minutes twice a yes. day, I mean, twice a week. You think that's nothing, but 10 minutes of writing every week, 52 weeks, year after year, you really are able to bring forward a significant amount of writing because too often we we do feel like we, you know, what's five minutes? But the thing is, if you have a story percolating inside of you, that may be at least enough so that you as a writer feel like you've made some space for your creative self-expression. And it's really the difference between being miserable. You know, writers who don't write is painful. So sometimes I think when you're busy with children and and work and partners and parents, et cetera, et cetera, sometimes I, I, I always set the minimum for my students is five minutes. If you can do five minutes, that is awesome. You know, because it is I do, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I'm a mother of three. My kids are older now, but when they were little, I wrote during soccer practice. I wrote in my car. <laughs> I mean, it was really hard carving out the time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I just really would say, like, even if you have a five minute block, it is worth it. Five minutes will change everything. And if you have this minimum viable goal of five minutes twice a week and you hit it, you feel great. You feel great about yourself. And if you have a goal of three times this week of 45 minutes and you don't hit one of them, you'll feel like crap. And then that bleeds over to next week and then it feels it's harder. So I love these minimum viable goals. So where do you write? Do you write at home? Do you go to cafes? How do you get it done? Well, for me right now, and like you said, and I think you're really right, your process changes 
And um, for me right now, I'm, I write mostly at home mm -hmm. um, because I have an empty nest and I, and it's quiet and I have a dog who likes to be with me. It just works out really well for me right now. It, uh, for many years, I, I really had a hard time work writing at home because I have three kids <laughs> and all their friends and all the <laughs> other crazy. But right now at this stage in my life, it's really lovely to be able to write at home in my office. May I ask what is behind you? There's a, I'm seeing like a black board with white lettering on it. Oh, what yes, is that? that is called uh, Meditations on a Door, a collaborative poem in spaces. And that is, um, I did it sort of an artist jam. It was like really fun with different artists and we all had a presentation and the artists, a lot of them were, you know, body artists and you know just all kinds of different art and mine was writing and so I had everyone give me a couple of words and I put them all together in kind of a poem ish mm -hmm. and then I had work being done in my house and I had a door and I decided to hang my poem on a door and have it be called meditations on a door and I liked it so much I kept it and hung it in my office it's beautiful it reminds me of magnet poetry but the, all of the words were given to you and then and then hung on the door that is beautiful I had to ask about that thank you thank you <laughs> all right what is the most exciting thing you've ever realized about your writing process so I'm going to have to reference my book, Heart, Soul, Pen, because it's it's um, these 10 steps to the divine download. What's the divine download? Well, that's the thing I discovered. And, I, and I'm sure every writer has a different name for it. You know, it could be called the flow. But the most exciting thing I ever discovered as a writer is how I got into this place that I named the divine download where the words seem to be coming from somewhere else, mm -hmm. not from me. And I literally was typing to keep up with the download that was coming to me, but I really had no idea what I was actually writing. And I feel like that was the most generative and joyful experience of my creative life is when I'm in that place. Can you give us a tip or two on getting into it? I know that's in your book and people should buy the book, but just give us a little teaser. You'll get, all the, you'll get all the steps, but I guess I'll tell you a couple of the ones that I think are most powerful. The first step in the book is revise and release limiting beliefs. And I talk about this so much with my students and I talk about it in the book before you ever write, before you ever even begin. If you sit down with yourself and ask yourself, what do I believe about myself as a writer, about the value of what I have to say, about my own writing process, you know, what do I really believe about the importance of what I want to share? And so often our beliefs are so not supportive to the goal to write. We believe mm -hmm. things like, I'm dumb. I don't have anything important to say. This is not um, interesting. No one will ever pay me for it. No one wants to no hear me. Pay. Right. Exactly. All these things. And when you believe that, you know, it's like, it feels like writing through mud. And so I talk about like, there's a few things we can do before we ever start writing that will make your writing so much more fun. And I think to get into the divine download, one of the most important things is to really take a moment to look at your beliefs about yourself as a writer and the value of what you have to share. And if your beliefs do not match your goal, literally rewrite them, cross them out and rewrite them and write things like, I have something to say. I am interested in exploring my voice. My writing has meaning. I mm. I want to write because it's important to me, you know, and really anchor to these beliefs that support your goal. And just doing that before you ever start writing will so much help you in getting into the flow. I can imagine also if you keep that, those those affirmations, those words that you've rewritten close to you and remind yourself of it often. That would help too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I talk about repeating them to yourself, you know, rereading re them every day, at least three times. Mm -hmm. And that eventually you're not going to believe them right away. But eventually, the more we repeat these new beliefs, the more they become our beliefs. Mm -hmm. I, I have found this and I, I have to... Um allow myself to do as much eye rolling to myself for as long as I need. And then I find that after a while, 
I start to believe the things I'm saying and the eye rolling stops, the internal eye rolling stops. And I go, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I am doing that. Yeah, that's, that's I love beautiful. That. I just yeah. say, and I just say, you know, have a sense of humor about yourself. Yes. It's giggling. It's okay if you don't even really believe your new beliefs. Yep. Just have a sense of humor. Keep doing it. And ultimately, you're going to start feeling inside that shift, you know, mm-hmm. where you're starting to feel more open to your own creativity. I love that so much. Speaking of the struggle, those limitations, what is the part of writing that you have struggled with most? I would say the part of writing I struggle with most is beginning. It's like, I I, I like to say this saying, we teach most what we most need to learn. Yeah. So I feel like I talk about this all the time with my students because I'm actually really talking to myself. Yes. <laughs> Robin, sit down, butt in chair. It's like one once I get writing, you cannot even tear me away. I, you know, the phone can be ringing, the doorbell's ringing, the dog's barking. I don't care. I am writing. I am in the zone. But I struggle so much with beginning. I come Mm. up with, I got to clean the garage. I mean, I come up with all kinds of ideas of things that I need to do besides starting now, starting. Yeah, yeah. The moment where you sit down and begin, that is always my hardest and most difficult time. They talk about start the starting energy. And for so many of us, starting energy takes so much energy and the energy to stay in the chair, to keep going, requires so much less. But yeah. For me, I always think about it like working out because yes. I believe in the idea of working out, but I like hate <laughs> going to the gym and I think I'm an inherently physically lazy person. So it's like once I get there, I'm good, but it's so hard for me to do it. And and it so reminds me of writing. There's this there's an energetic quality about both of these things that make me feel good. And I feel like it's part of something that's really healthy for me, but that's starting. It's just a struggle. Ah, Amen, sister. What part of writing are you really, really good at? I would say I am, I am really, really good at writing what wants to be written. Ah, Tell me more about that. I think I've I've practiced in the years that I've really written regularly. I have really practiced allowing my words to come forward without forcing them to be anything. And so I feel like I'm really good at allowing what I call like my radical self-expression to come forward. And so for me, so often I'm surprised about what I've written because I don't always know what I'm going to be writing. Or even if I'm in a story, if I'm writing fiction, I don't really always know where the story's going. Because, and I allow myself to, to let it emerge. And I think I've gotten really good at that over time. That's, that's, that's amazing because that can also be a scary place to be in. It is a less controlled place to be in. It is this spontaneous thing where you can look down and say, oh no, what just happened on the page? What advice would you give writers who want to force less and and just follow the words? What advice might you give them? Well, you know, one of the things that I think is so great if you're if you're struggling with that is to write to a timer and to mm. commit to writing to a timer no more than 20 minutes. I'd even say if you're starting out, try like 10 minutes and commit to writing as fast as you can without I love thinking. that one. Yeah, and not allowing any editing or going back or any word you can't find, just write word. and But forcing yourself to write as quickly as you can to a timer. And I think that process of timed writing and really learning how to use timed writing really helps you to get to that place where the words are emerging as opposed to you forcing the words out. And it's, it's not a one and done kind of thing. I've talked to my own students about this, where they do it, they do it once and they find something radical and exciting, and then they don't do it again. You could do this for 10 minutes every day that you sit down. If you wanted to, you can, the timed writing is incredible. I have a student who, have you ever heard of the, um, it's called the most dangerous writing app. No, it's terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying. I would never use it, but I always tell my students about it because I always knew there would be one who would love it. And there is one right now. She just got, I think she said 2,900 words on the most dangerous writing app. And you're going to love this. 
you cannot slow down or stop writing or the screen will go red and then all your words will disappear and you can't get them back. They're gone. Completely gone. So you must keep going until the time is up and then you copy and paste your work out. It doesn't hold your work. I love your face, your face. And it's just terrifying. And if you're into it, it would work perfectly. You cannot slow down. You can't, I mean, you don't have to go very fast, but you can't stop. I love that. But again, as a, as a person who works mostly with women and yeah. women are so often multitaskers and a lot of my writers, yes. my, it's not something I could recommend because my whole plat, my whole platform is that writing is for all of us. And even if you do have people screaming mom every five minutes, you know, and the dogs barking and all these things are happening, you can still have that part of yourself you know, mm -hmm. that, that needs to write. And I feel like that app wouldn't work for. 100%. That is so, people. so it's, true. Yes. It's kind of interesting, Rachel, when you think about it, because it's like, that sounds great, but that's really not an app that a mom writer could really use because mm -hmm. we might have some choking in the other room. Maybe one and of then, the is and choking on the other one. So we you go. lose. And then you lose everything. You are absolutely right. There's another app I like called Written Kitten. You don't ever lose any words, but every hundred words you get a kitten or a cat. Oh, like a, pic a picture pops. I think you could choose cats, puppies, or uh, bunnies. But um, so that's a good one. And if you were to be I pulled like away, it would be fine. I like the Written Kitten, <laughs> and and I would I would just add to that too. Like I don't believe I think it's really great if you cannot be precious with your with yes. your writing with your writing. Um, style and be able to you know like some people will say to me like well i can't be disturbed it's like okay well i don't know where you live but like <laughs> really it, it's like if you can't be disturbed that's such a great way to not ever write yeah like you know when i was younger i would i would be in the middle of a novel and have to stop for 20 minutes to go do drive someone somewhere and then come home and just i taught myself to just get into it when i had the moment and not be precious with like silence and ex you know all these needs because i think that's a way we sabotage ourselves if the environment and the outside world isn't perfect then we can't write well that's a great way to not write I think really important words that you said right there too were I taught myself. And for those listeners who might be thinking, I do need silence. I cannot be disturbed. Number one, if your life is set up in a way that you can have whole days where you're not disturbed, great. You can keep that up. But if it's not working for you, like you said, if it is a form of self-sabotage, then one can learn. You can go to the cafe and practice writing for one minute at a time and then looking around and then one more minute at a time and you build that trust in yourself that you will be able to write while you are interrupted. But yeah, you taught yourself. Yeah. And I mean, it's also a beautiful thing to teach people around you that I've given myself this one hour and I'm not going to be disturbed because this is mm -hmm. for me thing too. But I guess I'm just saying that if you are someone who's caring for parents, children, have a job, you may not have the luxury of having a more of a special moment for yourself. You just might not. And don't let that keep you from writing, you know, but I, yes. some people do. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So what is the kindest thing you've ever done for yourself as a writer? I would say the kindest thing I've ever done for myself is to take uh, an overnight at a hotel and just give myself my full alone writing retreat night mm -hmm. and day. Mm -hmm. Do you, is this something you do regularly? I do that when my writing is under pressure. Like I really feel like something is coming out and I just can't seem to make either like, because of what's going on in my house, I can't do it. Or there's something mental going on. Like I just keep mm -hmm. the garage. <laughs> yeah. You know, then I will, when I feel like, but I'm so close to something really important and I can feel the pressure in me. That's when I know like, oh, an overnight will be so, will serve me so well. That is a great idea. Especially if you get the late checkout too and work, work all morning. Yeah. Exactly. If you get the late checkout and then you can check in at three, stay in the room, go down and have dinner, come back up, right, right, right. And then not leave until like after 12 the next day. That's so much great writing time. That is perfect. What a good, wonderful gift to give yourself. 
Will you tell us about a specific moment when you knew that you had ink in your veins? Oh, boy, that's such a good one. I guess the time I would say was when I was writing this book, or it's pen, I had a moment where I was really, it was like I was halfway through and I was really doubting myself. I was suddenly like, I'm, I can't finish it. I have a contract. I have a due date. I can't do it. And um, I went for a walk and I was listening to one of my favorite spiritual gurus, who's this woman named Esther Hicks. And I was going through and listening to, to her on different topics. And one of them was on creativity. And what she said was, your creativity is there to surprise and delight you. And for some reason, I think I was so focused on what can I say in this book that will help other people? How mm. can I come up with some teaching that will facilitate their process? You know, I really wanted the book to be in service and I got so stuck on like, what can I give? What can I say? What? How can I help? And when she said that, something changed and I realized like, okay, I'm just here to share, you know, what is surprise and delights me. And if it works for other people, wonderful. And that moment, it's like I came home and I definitely had ink in my veins and I sat down and I just like wrote the rest of the book. Oh. Draft of the rest. But so it was like some shift took place inside me and suddenly whatever was blocking me was gone. We You, you turned from the shoulds to the surprise and delight, you know, that is, that's incredible. And what a beautiful, beautiful shift to have not only had, but also noticed and processed and remembered. And it, and it stays with me. And I, I like what you said about like, should doesn't even really sound fun. Yeah. Light <laughs> does. It's like who's not down for surprise and delight? <laughs> Sign <laughs> me the heck up. That is gorgeous. Thank you. Can you tell us, please, what the best book is that you've read recently and why did you love it? Oh, well, I just finished book one and book two of Mick Heron's um, Slow Horses. Oh. And I read book one is Slow Horses, book two is Dead Lions. Okay, I loved these books. And I really want to add that they're outside my regular reading genre. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't read spy novels. And I love to push myself to read things outside of what I normally read. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I just want to say I loved both of the books and I'm going to get book three. And the other thing I loved about it, I love the story about Mick Heron and how he wrote these books, I think like 10 years ago and his, his slow process to really find success as a writer was so inspiring to me. Mm -hmm. And the books were funny and engaging and, I just loved the characters, his descriptions. It was just a pleasure to read both of them. That's wonderful. I didn't realize that he wrote Slow Horses, which everyone is talking about now on television, the, the series that's been made. Um, and I watched one episode and I loved it. But I had, because we, you know, I don't think we're related, Mick and I, but we share shelf space. And I had been noticing, oh, there's this other heron who is suddenly like, really selling well right next to me on the bookstore shelf and what is that so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to check that out thank you yeah, very really, much i really enjoyed it it's his books are totally entertaining oh that's that's what i love thank you and now will you please tell us about your book um my new book is called heart soul pen find your voice in the page and in your life and it's really 10 easy steps to find your voice and have that divine download. The book is really designed for women and for women who are looking to write. You don't have to be a writer, but if you're anyone who wants to find your voice, I think that this book will really help you get in touch with what it is that you want to say. And, you know, I work so much with women who are want to recover their identity, want to connect to their true selves you know, their authentic ideas and feelings. And so I feel like this book, if you're a writer, it may reconnect you to your voice. And if you've never written before, I think it's not scary. It's a really easy, friendly steps to really being able to connect to your voice on the page. That is lovely. Thank you for writing it. Thank you for sharing it with us. And where can we find you out there online? 
You can find me on Instagram at Robin Finn Author. And I post um, all about like the different workshops I have coming up. And you can find me at robinfinn.com, which also you can find out all about my books and read my personal essays and anything else you're curious about, robinfinn.com or at Robin Finn Author on Instagram. Thank you so much for being here today. It's been a delight to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun.